Hey guys, welcome to Jay Speak. This week we cover some questions. First question, why review guitars that you're gonna sell? I don't, I don't know that I understand the question. The question was messaged to me based upon my guitar collection. So we're gonna assume, am I plugging guitars I might wanna sell in hopes to sell them to you? No, not really. I mean, maybe, no, not a selfish plug. It, it's more honesty. It's just, what is it, 14, 15 guitars or whatever it is? I, I can't possibly have time to play them all, and I'm just being honest. So there are certain ones that I love to play, and I look at, and it's like, oh, you know what? I do want to play my guitar right now because I'm looking at you, and I want my hands on you. With that said, it's, yes, you tend to favor specific guitars over others for various reasons, but I think for me, once I recognize something about a guitar that I don't love or like, as much as something else, I start weighing the pros and cons of my mind of, well, this one's good, but I don't like the neck as much as this one, and they sound basically the same-ish, and because they're the same-ish, maybe I should sell one. You know, I, I think that's, again, I've been talking about Friedman a lot. I really like the sound. I really like the way they feel. What else is there? I mean, if they feel great and they sound great, isn't that the whole point of an instrument regardless of what it is, if it feels really good to you and it sounds really good, that's a win. That's all you could ever want in an instrument. And if it looks cool too, I mean, as guitar players, I think all the vanity comes in too. I really like that color. And I've been down that road. You buy one guitar in one color and the same model in another color, and it's not the same. So the color is not gonna sound better, right? Or does it? I can't remember. Either way, the point is, is that if you're favoring something and you're not playing it, to me, it's get rid of it, pass it on. And considering how much I use some of these things on the channel, if any of you were interested, it was kind of like, well, I'll mention it. I don't know. I'm probably going to go through a purge regardless, just because I, I am not playing everything I own, even though I like to look at them because I do see guitars as works of art. I'm like an art collector. Question two, am I gonna pick up the new Jake E. Lee Friedman amp? Uh, probably not initially. Um, I don't have one on order. It's kind of pricey, <laughs> like a lot of Friedman amps. Price comes down a little bit, pick up one used, I might check one out. Jake's an amazing guitar player. It's kind of not the realm I live in, if you've been watching the channel. The demos I've heard of the amp, it sounds amazing. Although like the BE Deluxe, I was really excited about and I didn't, I didn't pick that one up either. And I, I see really no need. I really like my BE 50. Um, if I'm going to pick up a Friedman amp, it would be a twin sister, which I haven't seen anything on since Nam because of the whole, you know, world pandemic thing. The coronavirus is really, really slowing down gear production. So that's obnoxious. No, but very seriously, if I could pick up a twin sister, I probably would do that. Although I battle with the whole dirty Shirley and I'll go back to my earlier point about buying a guitar in a different color or like it has another pickup option. Do I really need the twin sister? Is it worth going through the pain to sell the dirty Shirley to then add more money to pick up the twin sister? I don't know, I haven't figured that one out yet. If I do, you'll see the dirty Shirley gone and you'll see a twin sister move in. There's something about using a one channel amp and especially one like that that is really dynamic and using a two channel, so I don't know. But I guess in answer to your question, no, I don't have one on order. I don't have plans to get one right now. That doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. Your guess is as good as mine. Question three, and it's more of a comment. It's, I'm not a fan of Mesa's. They have too many switches. They do have a lot of switches and a lot of knobs but it's options and it's good options. Mesa gets a bad rap because Marshall and Friedman put a lot of stuff in their amps too. Not all of them. Mesa does it with every single one. Friedman does it, Marshall does it. They all do it to some degree. And I think a lot of the complaints about amps is it's a two channel amp, but it shares an EQ. I really wish it had another EQ. Well, Mesa gives you that. And then you're like, man, this sounds really good on the clean side, but if you push the gain, it sounds really good too. So Mesa then gives you a clean mode and a pushed mode. You see where I'm going with this? I like Mesa amps. Nay, I love Mesa amps. They sound very 
Mesa to me. It's a lot of preamp gain distortion. They have their own thing, and Mesa is a different thing than Marshall or Freeman or Orange or EVH, whatever, doesn't matter. Yes, they are very intimidating, and they do take a while to tweak. And there is, I swear, there is a slight difference between being here and here on a Mesa amp, and you'll hear it. And for whatever reason, when that mid knob hits this, or when the gain just backs down a little bit, it's perfect. You are rewarded for your time of playing through your amp. I can't say that with everything. I can say with most Friedmans, they sound good almost anywhere. And the volume can be very low, and they sound amazing. Like Marshalls, typically, you got to crank a little bit, especially the older ones, and they, they sound incredible. If you like that sound, there's nothing better than a Mesa. I mean, growing up in the 90s, like, pop punk, it was a Mesa dual rack, you know, and the, and the JCMs. So that's that's what I like. They are very intimidating. I think you're rewarded if you're a tweaker. If you're not a tweaker, Mesa is not for you. I don't care if you like it or not. You're gonna spend way more time messing with your amp than actually playing with it. And that's no good for anybody. You gotta like what you're doing. And so where I agree they have too many switches, they're there for a purpose. And generally they put most of their stuff up front and they don't put switches and stuff on the back. Cause honestly, I don't, I don't like that. I think that's kind of annoying, but I think the more switches and knobs on the front of an amp kind of distract guitar players. They do have too many switches. I think it's worth it though, if you like that tone. That's my answer, that's what I'm gonna stick to. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Many more videos to come. Don't miss one sub.